Hey, what's up guys? It's Toy House here. Thanks for tuning in again. It's great to see you again. Today we're going to be talking about prospecting in the Burning Crusade. So we're going to be talking about all the ores starting from copper and going all the way up through adamantite today. So let's talk about copper. Copper is the lowest uh, type of ore that you can prospect. Seemingly ubiquitous, meaning that seemingly it's everywhere. Uh, it's very common. Um, of the options that you can get from prospecting copper, you can get malachite, tiger's eye, or uh, which adds up to 100%, right? But you could also get shadow gem. Uh, and the reason this does not add up to 100% is because malachite and tiger's eye are considered common and shadow gem is considered uncommon. So it is possible to get both a malachite and a tiger's eye as well as a shadow gem. Um, that would be crazy lucky, of course. Uh, but it is possible to get more than one common per prospect. And then, of course, you also get that copper, uh, copper dust uh, from prospecting that ore, which you can vendor. Now, I did pull in the uh, TSM info. So, guys, if you haven't seen my other video on TSM, highly recommend. And it's going to allow you to look at the prospect value of each ore so that you can uh, decide for yourself if it's worth purchasing prospecting and then relisting what you got from prospecting. And this is where I feel like prospecting is the most fun where you can just buy a bunch of ore, prospect it, list it up on the auction house, and make some great uh, gold. So, uh, as you can see here, the market value is uh, not quite uh, where uh, it should be for the prospect value here. Um, so, I would not recommend uh, purchasing copper ore for the purpose of prospecting and then listing the gems. Uh, but I did pull it in there so you can get an idea of what it looks like. And, of course, it requires at least 20 skill of jewel crafting in order to prospect. Now let's move over to tin ore, the one thing holding you back from leveling up your mining skill. I put that there because I feel like whenever you're trying to level your mining skill, tin is the only thing that will get you over to iron, and it just seems like tin is nowhere to be found. It's always taking forever to get you over to iron. Um, but anyways, tin has a couple different options for the different gems that you can get from it. The most common ones are lesser moonstone, moss agate, shadow gem. These three are common, so again, you can get more than one of these. And then you'll also get the chance of a rare one, such as Jade, Citrine, or Aquamarine. If you look at the prospect value and the market value, it does look like tin is a good moneymaker. I actually know for myself, uh, I purchased a ton of tin ore before the Burning Crusade was released. Uh, and then when it was released, I uh, prospected it all. And uh, I think I made a ton of gold doing that. So um, I think tin is, is one of those where... Uh, it, it could actually definitely uh, be a good one to prospect, depending on your server's prices, of course. Make sure to do your due diligence, or a DD. Now, moving on to iron ore. This is uh, an ore that uh, I've never really been a fan of. Um, it's good for just selling on its own, but for prospecting, it's not the greatest. I put there in the quote, it is one of the highest priced low-level ores. As you can see, the market value on my server, Benediction, we have 47 silver as the market value. Uh, so that's quite a bit for a single iron ore. And then the prospect value is only 14 silver. So you can see this is basically uh, territory for not prospecting at all because iron ore is just way too expensive for what you can get from it. You're going to have lesser moonstone, citron, and jade as your common gems you can get from prospecting. And then the star ruby and the aquamarine as your rares. And it requires 125 jewel crafting skill in order to prospect. Of course, you're going to get that iron dust as well. Um, let's move on to Mithril. Bilbo Baggins thinks Mithril, thinks very highly of Mithril. If you guys remember that scene from The Lord of the Rings, uh, where Bilbo Baggins is like, it's Mithril. And he's given that, that chain vest over to uh, uh, that other hobbit. What the heck's his name? Uh, Frodo. Frodo. Frodo Baggins. Um, anyways, so in order to prospect mithril you need 175 jewel crafting skill and uh if you look here the market value is again way too high for the prospect value so this is not one that i'd recommend purchasing to prospect uh, but you do get some chances at citron star ruby and aquamarine as your commons again you can get more than one of those and then blue sapphire large opal azerothian diamond and huge emerald are your rares um so unfortunately mithril not the greatest for prospecting either but if you do have some by chance that you want to prospect, this is what you can get. Moving over to Thorium Ore, Azeroth's most difficult node to mine. I still remember the days of farming Thorium back in Vanilla WoW. It's a beautiful time. Beautiful time. 
So um, it takes 250 jewel crafting skill in order to prospect, uh, you know, five thorium ore. Your chances of getting a common uh, are, you know, divided amongst these equally. You've got star ruby, blue sapphire, large opal, azerothian diamond, and huge emerald. And of course, if you look at the uh, TSM auction DB market value, it's one gold, 18 silver, and the prospect value is one gold, 71 silver. So thorium, depending on your server's prices, could be a great option for prospecting for you to make some gold. So definitely go and check out your server's prices. Uh, this is actually all of the commons. So on the next slide, these are the uncommons that you can get from thorium ore, blood garnet, deep peridot, flame spessarite, golden drenite, shadow drenite, as well as azure moonstone. These all sell kind of for not that much on my server, but at least I think like two to four gold each. So again, it's decent actually. You can see the prospect value and the market value there. Um, it could be an opportunity for you. So I would say check out thorium ore. Um, basically in TSM, it's pretty simple to set, set up. Again, I have another video if you wanna know how to pull in that prospect value into your mouse over. All right, let's move on to fell iron ore. The, uh, the first experience mining in Outland for us miners. It's a beautiful sight getting to uh, tap into a thorium, or sorry, a fell iron ore node. So you'll need 275 skill for prospecting, uh, jewel crafting skill in order to prospect these five fell iron ore. It's very similar to the thorium ore, except your chances of getting these new Outland gems are much higher at 18%. If you look at the market value to the prospect value, fell iron ore does appear to also be a really good one. I've noticed that fell iron ore has actually been dropping quite rapidly in price over time. So depending on when you see this, it could be even a better time to try to purchase fell iron ore and try to prospect. Um, these are just the commons. If we go to the next slide, we can see these are the uncommons. There's only a 1.3% chance of getting each of these uh, rare, unique, blue quality um, gems here. The Noble Topaz, the Dawnstone, the Living Ruby, Night's Eye, Star of Loon, and Talisite, which all sell for quite a good amount of gold, particularly the Living Ruby, the Dawnstone, uh, Star of Loon. Those are all quite expensive, with Talisite, Night's Eye, and Noble Topaz being a little bit less. Again, prices may vary. Your mileage may vary, depending on what server you're on. Um, but I've just noticed those typically sell for a bit more. Um, if you look at, uh, again, the prospect value and the market value, I think Fell Iron Ore is definitely one you should look into, and I think you can make some gold there. Now, let's move on to our last ore of the day. We're going to be talking about Adamantite Ore. Uh, this is uh, the only other ore, actually, that can be prospected from Outland. So, uh, you know, Eternium or Corium cannot be prospected only these common ores can be prospected with the uh, exception of black iron ore which i believe is uncommon uh, as well the white rarity uh, but it cannot be prospected now adamantite ore is special uh, because well one it's the only one that can uh, be prospected requiring 325 skill but also it has the highest chance to get some of those other blue gems we were talking about now these these common ones 18 percent across the board on each of these the prospect value again is above the market value so definitely depending on your server prices check this one out and then let's actually take a look at some of these percentages so of these um you know blue quality gems four percent across the board i've seen some amazing posts where someone prospected i think five or six times in a row and every single time they prospected they actually got one of these gems they call it the prospecting run of a lifetime and that is for sure i mean nothing like even comes close to prospecting adamantite ore and getting one of these. Um, it's just one of the best feelings that there is in World of Warcraft. It's freaking great. So um, adamantite ore, definitely uh, take a look at your prices, look at the prospect value, look at the market value. And you know, the market value, um, by the way, like you're probably gonna find a ton of these under market value, right? And so, you know, that's why it's also important though to look at the, the you know, prospect values based off market value of the gems you get. So also keep that in mind. The prospect value could be lower than shown just as much as market value could be lower than shown, right? So 
uh, take a look at that if you're undercutting, right? Like the lowest price, right? Um, so take a look at all that. But adamantite ore, definitely uh, a great one. I'm sure this is one of the more popular prospecting options for the Burning Crusade. Uh, and it is quite uh, effective. You will need to have 325 skill in jewel crafting in order to begin prospecting. So if you need to level your jewel crafting, I do have another YouTube video that goes into a little bit more in depth how to level that. But with that said, guys... We are done going through all the different ores that you can prospect. Thank you so much for watching. It's always great uh, spending some time with you. I hope you learned something from this guide. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to join our community on YouTube. More guides like this are coming. So if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe uh, so you don't miss the next guide. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to uh, get more World of Warcraft content, don't forget to subscribe. My name is Toy House, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.